Uh, guys, I'm freaking out here, okay? Tonight is a full moon. And I haven't been entirely truthful with you guys. It turns out that when there's a full moon, I... Oh no. Here it comes. Uh, uh, oh god, it's so full! Ah! Uh, I'm... I'm changing! Ah! Oh no! I've changed into... Into something different now! Ah! Uh. Okay, so, uh, this will be, as we all know, I've already done a video on Sulong. I tackled that, like, over a year ago. So this will be Sulong 2 Electro Boogaloo. Uh, la last chapter was pretty intense. A lot of stuff went down last chapter. Uh, Kaido turned into a dragon. That's always fun to see. You got some moments with Luffy. You got a moment with Yamato where Yamato just declares, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not helping my dad. You know, he's in the hole. He fell down three stories and might be dead. Yeah, that's good. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we got a lot of really cool scenes. Uh, cool scenes with the scabbards and everything like that. But the end of the chapter, I think, took a lot of people by surprise. Not so much that the scabbards were facing off against Kaido. That was already kind of established. But the thing that kind of took everybody by surprise was like, oh, no. Like, Ino Arashi and Nekamamushi, they kind of plan this all out with the minx of Zo, and they're like, okay, Kaido can turn into a giant dragon, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty big deal, how are we gonna fight that thing? I'm like, okay, well, we do have our Sulong transformations, and it's gonna be a full moon tonight, and he's probably not gonna want to turn into a giant dragon in the middle of the banquet hall and attack that way. Like, for a number of reasons. Like, number one, he probably doesn't want to destroy his own castle, his own domain, Onigashima. But also, just like, he can't really get- he's a big dragon, you know, he fills up the whole damn sky. He can't really fight that well, even in that giant, you know, exhibition hall that the Golden Kagura was held in. I mean, that was a pretty big hallway and stuff, but, um, it would still limit his movements. And so they figured, like, okay, when he turns into a dragon, when he pulls the dragon card out on us because that's always probably like Kaido's Trump you know it's probably just like you know what you think you could fight me dragon mode you know and these these ears always I always have a problem with these ears they always typically fall down so I'm just gonna throw them on Barry here right now yeah that that works there you go but anyway yeah so you know Kaido usually just like oh you're op you're opposing me I'll just pull the dragon card and run everyone's just gonna shut the hell up after that so the minks were like, let's play that to our advantage. So he's going to burst out of the ceiling, really epic, really scary. Roar, I'm a duck dragon. And then the minks are all going to be there. All of the musketeers, all of the uh, the forest guardians are going to be gathered on the roof of Onigashima. Um, and they're just going to be ready to go. And then as soon as Kaido bursts out and the minks are there and the scabbards are there, full moon, no clouds yet. <laughs> no clouds yet, because that might, that might go south because Kaido, from what we understand, can literally control clouds. Uh, he summoned dark clouds when he arrived at uh, the Bakora town, at Okabore town. So, um... That could definitely happen. There's another perspective here. I've seen a lot of people going with it. They've been going like the Dragon Ball Z route with this. And I didn't even consider this as a possibility because, you know, that's like, that seems to be getting on like a next level kind of like deal, you know, beyond just One Piece. And it's where Kaido just realizes that the Minx use the moon to transform. And he's just like, all right, Boro Breath. BAM! And just blast the moon clean out of the sky, like Jackie Chun and, you know, when Goku transformed during the, you know, 21st World Martial Arts Tournament, uh, or, you know, Piccolo did it that one time. So, I, I don't know if that's gonna happen, although I've seen a lot of really fun, uh, comments about that, and Gemini drew this awesome, uh, panel where like, Kaido's like, oh, you don't think I know about Mink Sulong? BAM! And then all of the scabbards make the ha huh? face, and then off in the corner you just see Eneru like having a panic attack and meanwhile meanwhile on the moon Eneru is like amassing his automata army and he's like he's tripping out he's tricking out the maxim you know he's getting like cannons and like laser guns attached to the maxim and shit and he's up there and he's like ah my loyal followers these last two years I have been gathering power on my fairy birth but today today is the day where we descend to the mortal plane, and we annihilate all those that dwell in the blue and white seas alike. For I am the new god, Eneru the Magnificent! Hey sir, what's that? Hey what? BOOM! 
and the freaking moon just explodes <laughs> and all the all the automata are just like destroyed some of them are maybe still alive they're just floating through the vacuum of space you know um i don't even really know if it is a vacuum of space because you know like eneru is able to breathe on the moon um but that would be pretty damn funny now I want to throw something out there, though, even with the possibility that Eneru might, uh, not, that, the, the possibility that Eneru might be amassing an army and then Kaido blows him up. Yeah, that's a very likely possibility. Next chapter, that'll probably happen. But the possibility that if Kaido actually does, like, try to blow up the moon, that's not necessarily an end-all, be-all bad thing. Because at least if Oda goes back and addresses the globe that he himself drew during, you know, the backstory with Robin at Ohara, the One Piece world has like seven moons. I think like six regular ones that are just going through different orbits. And then there's like a moon that like orbits another moon. You know, there's like a tiny moon that's orbiting that moon. So, I, I mean, once again, I don't know if Oda is going to like, like Oda might have just drawn that globe because he's like, I just want the One Piece globe to look really cool. Maybe Oda's not like, I'm not going to really explore each of those moons or anything like that. It's not like we're going to, you know, have a big deal like the, the Straw Hats are going to go moon hopping or anything like that. It's just, I drew a really cool globe. But that is what he drew, so canonically, the One Piece world has more than one moon. And the moon has definitely played very vital roles in the story before. Uh, like, during, even as far back as the East Blue, the moon was relevant because it was like the moon phase that, like, Kuro was going to institute his plan to take over the village, right? But, of course, in the last arc, Tot, land and then this arc the moon is playing a much more pivotal role because the moon is you know required for the minks to activate their sulong um so i also threw out the idea you know i talked about this when i did i think the first sulong video it's that you know in our world, there's a full moon about once a month. Sometimes you get that blue moon that's like maybe two uh, two full moons in a single month. Um, but in the One Piece world, that might not be the case. It might be a full moon, you know, every uh, couple of weeks or every few days, you know, and that's just how they could get the schedule down or whatever. I, I don't know. So, you know, I, I don't know if Oda's going to go that road with it, but if Kaido really did, like... Like, he might attempt to do it. I mean, who knows? It's it's actually not as crazy as you might think. At first, I thought it was kind of crazy and ridiculous because this is turning into, like, Dragon Ball Z with, like, key attacks and stuff. But then you actually start to think, it's like, well, wait a second. The moon is kind of closer than you think because you can, like, in the One Piece world, it's already been established that in order to reach the moon, you can literally just, like, fill up a balloon and just float up there because that's what the automata did on Karakuri Island. They just filled up balloons and just floated to the moon. Eneru got in his Maxim, which the Maxim was a cool ship and everything, and it was powered by his Goro Goro Nomi powers, but Eneru didn't have, like, a spaceship or anything. He didn't have advanced computers or anything. He just got into a flying machine and just kept going higher and higher and higher and higher until he just landed on the damn moon. So, you know, you might say, like, oh, well, like, Oda's just doing it just for the sake of, like, comedy, maybe. You know, like, oh, they, they filled up a balloon with helium and they just floated to the moon. It's that easy. But if he established it that far, then that kind of means the moon is a lot closer and it's reachable like in theory couldn't kaido just like keep making clouds and just literally go to the moon if he wanted to you know couldn't sanji keep using geppo i mean maybe if the air gets thinner a little bit maybe he couldn't but whatever we're getting into a whole other discussion here i'm just saying like kaido aiming his boro breath at the moon and at least attempting to blow it up that might be something he might actually try i'm not i'm not saying it would work but he could try, right? So I, I think the more likely thing here beyond Kaido blowing up the moon would be him just using the clouds to, like, obscure it. And so we've already established with the Sulong when Carrot went into it and when Peckham's went into it in Totland, um, you know, all it takes is just obscuring the moon or covering up your eyes with a hat or putting on glasses. Like Peckham's had his sunglasses on. All he had to do was take off the glasses and then boom, he went Sulong. Um, that's all he had to do there. So just obscuring the moon for a little bit. Uh, you would probably be able to maintain your Sulong for a couple of seconds, but you would eventually regress back into your regular mink form. Um, it might also have something to do with your experience with the form because Carrot said, you know, it, it tired her out quite a bit. Now, when she did go into Sulong, she was really adept with it. She was jumping around. She was able to maintain her sanity. It looked like Peckoms was going into, like, a raging beast. So she had a good, decent control over her Sulong, but she's still pretty young compared to the other minks. So if, like, Wanda or Bibi or Rhodey or definitely Inu Arashi, Nekamamushi, Sicilian, if they went into their respective Sulongs, they would have maybe way more control over it. And even if the moon was obscure, they might still be able to maintain the form for maybe a little bit before going back 
into their regular states, okay? So let's talk about Neko and Inu's forms, what they would look like. Well, last chapter, I, t I talked about how Neko's uh, Sulong form, I would like that to be like the Shezure cat from Alice in Wonderland, this very mischievous kind of cat. And we even saw that in the final scene of the last chapter. We saw the silhouette, which is kind of reminiscent because in Alice in Wonderland, at least, I never saw like any of the newer ones, like that newer movie. I think Johnny Depp was in one of them, the live action. I never saw those kind of, uh, that, that, that version of Alice in Wonderland. Um, I'm going off the old animation one, and I had that on VHS when I was growing up, and I watched that quite a bit. But when you see the Cheshire Cat, it's like the, the eyes and the smile appear first, and then it kind of like morphs, and then it becomes the Cheshire, okay? So that's uh, that's what I was thinking a little bit, because Nekomamushi, they're all going to get bigger, because that's like the basic theme of Sulong from what we've seen so far. Um, actually, you know what it is? It, I think it's less about them getting bigger, like this, just their bodies expanding or anything, and it's more about their natural mink abilities just getting leveled up. So, for example, Carrot is a bunny mink. She prides herself with being able to jump and run very far and, and run fast. You know, that's what she does. She's a bunny mink. So when she goes into her sulong, her legs get way longer. So she can jump way further and she can run way faster, okay? When Peckham's went into his Sulong, we didn't get to see that much of it, but he's a lion mink. And lions are very muscular. They're very strong, you know? They're, they're cats. They leap. They maul. That's what they do. And so when Peckham's was going into his Sulong, he was getting more buff. He was just like, BOOSH, you know? You know, Carrot didn't get buffed too much. She wasn't Miracle from My Hero Academia. By the way, Barry, remind me, we need to do another Miracle video. We're already doing Sulong 2 Electro Boogaloo. We now need to do Miracle 2 Sexy Bunny Girl 2. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll come up workshop that title a little bit more, but you know, we need to do another Miracle video. But the point is, yeah, like Carrot's legs got longer because that's what she uses as her as a mink. You know, she can jump high and everything like that. Peckham's got more muscle. Okay, fair. So if going by that logic, maybe uh, Nekamamushi, when he goes into his Sulong, yeah, his fur will all go white and everything like all the Sulongs do. He'll get a luxurious mane of white hair and there'll be like Electro shooting off of it and everything like that. But he'll get, you know, his legs, his limbs might get longer so he'll be able to jump further like a cat or pounce or stuff like that his you know teeth his fangs would get longer maybe something of that nature um oh god that would be brutal because nekamamushi's teeth always like just imagine nekamamushi biting you and just channeling a crap ton of electro into you just be bitten in because carrot even did that in the last arc you know she'd get bit and then you know you're you're done you're dropped at that point right um, and then as for Inu Arashi being a dog, being a doggo, I would assume, like, his canines, his teeth would get, like, it would, I, I, I talked about it being similar to, um, Charmy's food magic, like, the wolf that she creates during the food magic ability with, with her powers, um, you know, and so, obviously, wolves and dogs are related, so I'm imagining Inu Arashi's gonna look more like a, a rabid wolf when he transforms into his, uh, his Sulong. I've also been seeing a lot of, uh, oh, he's gonna be like, uh, Shishomaru from Inu Arashi, uh, Inu, Inu Rasha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Inuyasha, right? Okay, so he's gonna transform into like a giant wolf. Um, that's gonna be really cool. Uh, and you know, maybe the teeth get bigger, and then the paws and everything, claws get longer and stuff like that. Uh, maybe the tail. Maybe Inurashi has a tail that'll poof out, and maybe use the tail. And Neko as well. That'll be really cool. Uh, Sicilian, I believe, is also a lion, right? So Sicilian and Peckhams, weren't they both lions? So that'd be also pretty cool. So Sicilian, if he transforms, he'll just get way more buff. Uh, BB, he's a gorilla. He's a gorilla. So he'll get, like, super, like, poof! You know, you know how, like, um, like, Zoro does, like, each gorilla, knee gorilla. You know, BB is, like, all gorilla. Boo! And just, like, giant muscles, like, from freaking Toriko whenever they're, like, hulking out or whatever. So BB's just gonna be the Hulk. Um, Rhodey is a bull. So I can imagine his horns getting like so ridiculously big it would look like his his neck gets upgraded for one thing like his neck just becomes like a tank and then Rhodey's horns just just become so damn big it's just like you know he has like I have the mightiest neck and his horns are like weigh a ton like each and then he like gores you and then like electrocutes you with the freaking electro spewing off of his horns uh Wanda is also a dog same thing with Inu Arashi so I can imagine transforming into more like a wolf um you know just maybe a little bit more feminine because Wanda is a woman mink um let's see who else who else came I'm trying to think oh the musketeers you have so you have Consulot who's a 
a fox. Uh, and you also have Giovanni, who's a zebra. Uh, I wonder what kind of... Well, since we're already talking about Toriko, I'm rereading Toriko right now. So, um, the, the Dharma horse. The Dharma horse in, in, in Toriko is just this giant zebra. It's a giant zebra. It's, like, taller than, like, the Empire State Building. It's huge. So, Giovanni probably won't get that big, but long, elegant, you know, mane of hair, you know, and just electro spewing out, and then just, you know, you ever get bitten by a horse? Have you ever gotten kicked by a horse? Have you ever been electrocuted and kicked by a horse at the same time? Well, that's basically like with a zebra, so there you go. Zebras and horses, same thing. Actually, zebras, uh, one crucial difference between um, zebras and horses is that they tend to bite a lot more. Uh, one of the reasons why riding zebra don't really work as well as, like, riding horses, uh, because they, they will try to bite you a lot. Um, you know, horses can as well, but zebras are just more prone to it. So, uh, yeah, that, that might be more dangerous for Giovanni, turning into a zebra, zebra Sulong, and then, like, biting people, and then that's more the Electro coming from that, right? Because all their different fighting styles are a lot more carnal, a lot more primal, because their base are animals. So I could honestly see, even if some of them don't have complete control over the Sulong, that's okay, that's fine, because they transform, and then they just ravage Kaido, you know? I mean, yeah, it's, it's important to think and maintain your sanity, like Carrot knew what she was doing when she was wrecking Daifuku's ships, but in this one particular instance, they're not running on, on the sea or anything like that, so you can kind of dial down the eloquence or the uh, precision here. I think it's more about just like, go so long, rah, now just jump on the dragon and rip his scales off! You know, that's going to be more, I think, what everyone's going to be focusing on right now. Of course, Inu and Neko, Giovanni, Consulat, Sicily, and they're all able going to be able to to maintain their sanity because they've been trained with this for a while. Uh, but there might be some of the minks that don't have as much of a control over it, but I still think they'll be able to do just fine. Unless, of course, Kaido blows up the moon or obscures the sky. Somebody even said, because I wanted Carrot to get in on this action. I wanted, okay, Carrot and Nami, they got freed from the yokai homies last chapter. I'm like, okay, cool. Carrot, you can freaking use Geppo basically just, just at birth. You can, like, jump, because that's what your ability is. So jump through the hole, get up to the top, and then go Sulong and then fight Kaido. But other people were saying, it was like, well, you know, Kaido blasted a pretty damn big hole in that ceiling. So even without um, jumping onto the roof, Carrot could probably just look through the giant sky skylight that Kaido made, see the moon, and she could turn into a too long just in the exhibition hall so it's kind of up for debate right now whether or not carrot is going to get totally into it down there she's going to like start fighting in in the crowd with the straw hats with like nami and luffy and everybody there they might go try to save uh momo as well because momonosuke is still up on the scaffolding or if she's going to be like i must fight with my mink brothers and sisters and then she you know bounces up and then she fights but i really want you know if, if all the other minks are going so long next chapter i want Carrot to go so long as well i don't care if it's at the top with kaido or she's fighting in the crowd I don't even care if she's just fighting a bunch of riffraff, whatever. That actually be, would be fun to see. Her just going so long and just wrecking all of the waiters and pleasures shit. I'd be fine with that, okay. Now, now though, we have someone else though. We have um, sort of a uh, a late contender here. Somebody we haven't really seen go so long yet, uh, but someone that we're all really expecting great things from. And I made a whole video about him a couple weeks ago. Um, and in that video, you know, one of the things that I, I, I did that video and then I'm like, man... That sucks. I forgot to bring up Sulong and Electro, but it's okay. Oda's got my back because, like, the next week this chapter comes out and we're already addressing the Minx and Sulong, so I have an opportunity to address it here. And that is, of course, the man, the bear, the legend, Beppo. Before we continue, I just want to show you a rather humorous uh, piece of fan art that I saw on Pinterest uh, featuring Beppo going into his Sulong transformation. Oda, if you make that a thing, I, I don't even care what you do with the rest of One Piece. I don't even care. You know, you could you could literally just show Beppo in Sulong and it's this, and then the rest of One Piece could degrade instantly like it could be like they like like it's like oh well okay so uh they defeat kaido by hugging him and then uh the straw hats leave and uh they get to raftel and they fight against uh the fight with uh like uh, uh blackbeard and luffy last like half a chapter luffy just conks him out and it turns out that the uh the, the one piece was a lifetime supply of gummy bears and then eneru comes back and then destroys all the straw hats and then the story ends 
I, I was like, wow, that is the worst ending to this story imaginable, but I don't care because Beppo Sulong was the most hilarious thing ever, right? Um, okay, so probably wouldn't look like that, but Beppo going Sulong, Beppo, you understand, is the first mink ever introduced in this story. He was introduced as Sabaody. I thought Faust was introduced at the same time. I think he still was way in the background, but we don't get to see him in full view until a little bit later. Um, yeah, I think it was when uh, Hawkins went to Food Vaulton and fought against Brownbeard. I think that's when we got to see Faust, like, kind of, like, there in full scope. We might have seen him in Sabaody way in the background, but we saw Beppo first before even Faust. So, um, by the way, just speaking about that, yeah, Faust would also still be in the in Wano, right? Because Hawkins is there, his crew is there, so might see Faust pop in, right? We, we don't know. But anyway, yeah, more importantly, Beppo, okay? So Beppo going so long, how would he control that? Would he have decent control over it, or would he be like uh, Peckham's, not really having good control? Because Beppo left Zoe when he was relatively young, and Peckham's also left Zoe to go, you know, work on Big Mom's crew and everything like that. So it's possible that, you know, the training to master Sulong, at least to maintain your sanity while you're in Sulong, so you don't just become a raging beast, there's, like, school you got to attend. There's lessons and practices you got to do and, like, training and, like, focusing the mind and meditation or something in order to master Sulong the way, the way that, like, uh, Inu and Neko, I'm sure, have, right? Um, and because Peckham's and Beppo left Zoe for most of their lives, uh, Beppo was pretty young. He was, like, you know, five years old or whatever because it was, like, you know, it was back when Law was a little kid and Sachi and Penguin were all little kids when they all ran into each other. So Beppo has not um, been back to Zoe in a long time ever since, you know, they arrived in, you know, a couple arcs ago, you know, when they were there, you know, when Law and, you know, all the Straw Hats arrived at Zoe. Um, so, yeah, Beppo, uh, he might not have trained that well in Sulong, so he might be more of a raging beast. He might be more similar to, um, Peckham's, or he might have pretty decent control over it. We don't know. But, uh, I want to see that so bad. I want to see, like, Beppo fighting alongside Law, and then him, like, like, his animal instincts kick in. It's just like, oh, Captain! My... Mink brothers and sisters are fighting on the roof. I must go to them! And Law's just like, Beppo, you've been my trusted friend and vice captain for years. Go and wreck them up every direction. I'm like, I will, Captain, I will. Roar! And then he just turns into a giant polar bear mink, Sulong. And Beppo also, from what we've seen so far, he doesn't tend to use Electro very much. Uh, at Sabaody, I don't think he used it at all. Did he use it during Zoe? I don't think he did. He might have. All minks are capable of it, so that they're, they're able to do that from, like, birth. Even, like, toddlers can use Electro. So, you know, Beppo could definitely use it, but maybe he has to, like, oh, I'm not going to use this, you know, against regular humans. That's just not fair. I'll use my, my Kung Fu Karate Polar Bear martial art against them. But against, like, Kaido, yeah. So... I, I'm, I apologize for not referencing more about Beppo's Sulong or his Electro during the Beppo video. I'm like, I finally gave Beppo his own video, but I, I missed that. But no, I'm expecting, I'm expecting great things from Beppo. I'm expecting like, like, okay, Kaido's fighting against all the minks and he's ripping them off him. He's like, get off of me, you stupid mink. Poo! You know, Boro Breath. He's like, the entire top of the dome is on fire. The muffin is being burned. You know, Neko and Inu, they're jumping around because the minks get wicked fast. They're already most of the minks already have good leg strength because they're animals and they can move maneuver around their agility is wicked high um but in this sulong state they're even faster and then they can like zip around and like attack kaido and, like electro electro claw bite you know and they're just like shredding him from every direction and kaido is just like you know what i've had enough of this and he just launches maybe an attack to either either obscure the moon or blow up the moon or maybe he'll aim his boro breath at the roof so the entire roof just collapses and he's like screw this we'll fix the damn roof later bam and he just blows up the entire roof and all the minks fall down. And he's like, ha ha, but I can fly because I'm a dragon. Whoa. And then that in the back is when Beppo, his eyes are just gleaming in the darkness. And he's like, you missed somebody, you mother. And he just like, like what? He just spins through the air. And he's like, ha! And just slashes Kaido right in the face with his mighty polar bear electro claws. Yes. <laughs> all of the yes. Okay. 
So I, I'm officially pumped now. Are you officially pumped for this? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Comment below what you guys think or what the Sulong forms are going to look like or how this is going to go down. Uh, I'm still going to stand with what I said in the chapter. I still think it's going to be something along the lines of, like, they're going to kind of have the upper hand for Kaido for a little bit. And when I say the upper hand, I don't mean they're going to be, like, ripping off his limbs and just blood spewing everywhere. But they're going to be overwhelming him. They're going to overwhelm him. They're going to maybe knock him down or suppress his dragon form and then Kaido is just gonna be like all right screw this and he's either gonna obscure the moon or destroy the moon or destroy the roof he's gonna do something to you know edge it in his advantage or the calamities might show up that's another thing too the calamities might show well looks like you brought some some, some herbivores to a freaking dinosaur party you know uh and then like like freaking king turns into a tyrannodon queen is the brachiosaur jack's a mammoth back there and then they all fight the minks together that would oh that would just be an animal on animal brawl that would be wicked cool to see right we have to wait two weeks though two weeks into the next chapter that's that's gonna be a long one i don't know if i'm gonna make it through that one guys but, um, hey, I got to make another mink video, and so just just keep it coming, Oda, just keep it rolling. If you want to make the next five chapters all mink-based, I'm, I'm, I will not complain about that at all, sir. We can have mink-wink, mink-wink, mink-wink on the channel. We can do that. Minks can wink. Yes, carrot can, can wink. Yes, okay. Well... With that being said, I think I'm going to be hitting the old dusty trail now. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, look forward for that Miracle video, which will probably happen in the nearest future. Uh, later, everybody. Teching 101, bunny hopping out of here. Hashtag not a furry. Oh, my God. How hilarious would it have been? I didn't think of this, and I, I don't have one, but how hilarious would it have been if I'm hopping out of there and I just turn around and there's just like a bunny tail on my on my back? That would that would have been funny. Alright, you can picture that on your own time. Alright, later everyone.